when he came to the States. Look at the camera. Oh. Uh, yeah, we were talking yeah. about Pep uh, yeah. after his after lumberjack he, yeah. job. He left the woods and he moved to Springfield to work for his uncle, Arthur Blaze. And his uncle dug basement cellars for new homes that were going up. It was in construction, but they didn't have payloaders or any of that stuff. They dug these basements by hand with shovels. So that's what he did. Did you tell us at one time that he had done basements for some of the apartment blocks on Belmont Avenue? No, I don't remember telling yeah, you that. Yeah. No. I know, that would have been big projects. Yeah. He was more into home. Home building, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the blocks, I think that would have been a little bit too big for yeah, him. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then where they lived, I think they were doing work mainly in that area. And this was in Springfield? In Springfield. Okay. On Mill Street, um, where the armory is, the Springfield Armory, probably you all remember that, or you've read about it in history. And we lived on Rifle Street that they remained, renamed it a Mill. So, uh, this Uncle Arthur, he was my great uncle, he had, he owned three houses there. And he lived in one house, and then they rented the two other houses, which were smaller. And a lot of his workers boarded in their house, it was a big house. Uh, and then <clears throat> he rented uh, the house that I was born in, he rented that to uh, my father, Pep, and then anybody else that needed a place to stay. So anyways, he lived there while he, he worked a few, a few years, and then he went back, he'd go back to Canada every year, and he met um, Mem's sister, and uh, her name was Bertha, and uh, she was, uh, I think a couple years older than Mem. So he started courting her. They didn't call it dating, they called it courting. So he started courting her, coming to visit her frequently, and then he asked her to marry him. In the meantime, she fell sick. She was a teacher in the village, but she fell sick and eventually died with kidney disease. So, of course, that was the end of his, his engagement with her. She must have been young then. Who, ma'am? No, her sister. Oh, yeah, she was about 18. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So, anyways, um, naturally, he went back to the States to work. And then, you know, the following year, he came up, back up to the village and everything. And of course, by that time, Mem had gotten a little older, and he thought she was kind of cute, too. So, anyways, he started courting her, too. So, you know, he went back and forth for a couple years, and then evidently he asked her to marry him. So, they got married. I don't know how long they courted, but I know it was at least a year, because, um, let me think. They moved, oh yeah, they got married in 19, uh, let me see, well, we, I was born in 1925. They came out here in 1924. And uh, of course, I was born a following year. Where did, did they get married in Canada? No, they got married in their village. In Canada? In Canada, yeah. 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 At the church there. Yeah, okay. I don't know if you, you probably remember going to the church. No. If I yeah. did, I was young. Yeah, yeah, you were, yeah. So anyway, they got married in the village church there. And it's funny, they had a wedding and a reception. And the next day, they were on their way down to the States, to the apartment that he was living at. That must have been hard for Mem to come from a farm. Well, Mem said, well, she had worked in the city, you know, as a nanny. 
but she was young and... How old was Mem when she got married? She was, let me see, well, they came out here in 24. Yeah, she, she I, I think, um, I would have to look it up in the, uh, in the uh, genealogy. Because they came out here in 24, and of course, got pregnant right away. I was born in 25. They married in July, and April 24th, the following year, is when I was born. What year was Mem born in? Uh, 1904, I think. So she was 20 years old then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. 19, actually 19 years old when they came to the <coughs> States. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she was young. And you know what she told me? That when she first moved out here, of course she didn't know anyone, didn't speak English, she was so lonely. She said, I couldn't believe it. Of course, she never told Pep or anything, but she said she'd cry herself to sleep every night. But then, when I came alone, I was born at home, and uh, she said the minute they put the baby in her arm, I was born at, at home, at home on Mill Street. The minute they put me in her arms, she said she was never lonely again. And I think that's why Mem and I were especially close to each other. I was the first, but I took away all her loneliness. She said after that, she was never mm. lonely again. Mm. And I think maybe because I was a firstborn, and I don't know, we've always been very close. So. Anyways, after that, 14 months later, Uncle Harvey came along. So there she was busy with two babies, practically, and she had boarders because they had to pay the rent. So she had two boarders at the time, two of my uncles. Um, well, Pep and, and, and one of the uncles, Uncle Emilien. You remember him yeah. in Connecticut? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They had, she had them, and that helped to pay the rent, too. They didn't make big wages, believe me, if he made 50 cents a day. No, you, was, said, you said she had two boarders? Uh, first of all, one boarder. Okay. But then after that, she had Uncle Eugene. Oh, yeah, right, right. And then, Actually, the first boarder was Uncle Simeon. You, you remember him, yeah, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Uncle Simeon was the first boarder. And then, it, I think it was after that, it was Eugene, who finally went to Rhode Island, and Emilien, who went to Connecticut. But there she was with two little kids, uh, a baby and me, and uh, feeding all these men eventually. She had four, four men to feed, Pep and the three brothers, plus taking care of us two kids. No, so at, at the beginning, they had two rooms, the kitchen and, and a room to sleep. That was it. Because somebody else was renting the other rooms, and they shared the kitchen. Can you picture that? <laughs> Where did the boarders sleep? <laughs> they doubled up on everything. Wow, wow. Mam and Pep had their room, and the two kids, us two, wow. and then the other shared the other room. Wow. And our bathroom was in the hallway, and there was no heat there. But you didn't shower every day. You took a bath once a week. Uh, I know none of you remember that, but that's now what, what were What were the logistics of just grocery shopping and keeping the house supplied? Well, you know what it was. At the time, <coughs> they had this little Italian store up the hill, Chabelli's, and he, he would sell them, you know, meat, potatoes, whatever they needed. The, the, don't forget that the diets weren't like they are today, you know, with all kinds of fancy stuff. So she'd go up there, and what he, he would do, 
whatever they bought, he'd run up a tab. So anytime she had extra money, she'd go and put money on her tab. As Pep got paid, uh, you know, he probably made a, I don't know, a dollar a day, she'd go up and put money on the tab. So I, I don't want to get ahead of myself or, or what, but anyways, after the, the three brothers were there, then they could afford to rent the whole, apart, the whole apartment. So I think there were five rooms. And they rented, with the extra money from the boarders, they were able to rent the whole apartment. Now this was all in the house that Pep was renting from his uncle Arthur? Yeah, and okay. this, this was a two-family house. We were on the second floor. So, and again, was this on Rifle Street? Or mm -hmm. Mil R okay. Yeah, that was on Rifle Street. Rifle and That's Street. where I was born. Uncle Harvey was born. Aunt Lou was born there too. So, uh, by then, when Aunt Lou was born, the two of the brothers had left to get married. Uh, Eugene in Rhode Island and Emilia in Connecticut. So, but Uncle Simeo stayed with us, even when we moved. He wasn't married and had no intentions of getting married at the time. So he was always with us. He always, actually older, he shared a bedroom with Harvey because we didn't have extra bedrooms. <laughs> so anyways, um, we were there I'm trying to think how long we were there. Oh, I started public school at Elias Brookings School in Springfield. That was a public school. And um, Mem always wanted me, or us, to go to a Catholic school. So I'll tell you a little tidbit too. When on Sundays, Pep would stay home and take care of Harvey and Aunt Lucy. Mem and I would walk two miles down to St. Joseph Church down the south end, go to Mass, then walk back up two miles to come back home. Wow. Every wow. single Sunday, I don't care if it snowed or whatever. Wow, even in the winter? Even in the winter, wow. we went to Mass. Wow. Mem and I. Wow. <laughs> Every every Sunday wow. and I remember one time and then going downhill to the south end and our church that went good but coming up you were coming uphill you know and one time and of course you didn't have bathrooms in the churches then so on the way up we're up the hill I can still see that house in my mind I had to pee so much Mem wanted me to pee near a bush. I said, I won't pee near a bush. <laughs> so she went into the house that was there, knocked on the door and asked if I could go pee. <laughs> so one how, of the, How old were you? <laughs> maybe five or six. <laughs> they let me in. Wow. They let me in. Yeah, today maybe not, but yeah. then they did. So that was our routine every Sunday. And on Sundays, Mem always made a nice big meal, a big French-Canadian meal, you know. And, um, and then we'd play games, and um, I had a yard to play in. Oh, I'll have to tell you, we had a dog called Jigs. He was a little um, bulldog. Oh, a very sweet little dog. And one time, you know, I look back, I think a lot of times I was really disobedient because men would tell me not to do this or do that, and I would, and that wasn't good. So one time I wanted to go play in the yard. So, because she had the other two to, to get ready, two to go down, she didn't want me alone. So she told me I could go down with with the dog, but to stay in the yard. So I came down with a ball, and I'm playing with the ball with the dog, and 
some way the ball went out in the street and there was a car coming down because there was a good incline. Do you know the dog came out in the street, grabbed the back of my, my, my pants, we didn't wear slacks then, but or my skirt or whatever, and pulled me back. You were chasing after the ball? I was going for the ball. Wow. And Mem happened to go out on the porch to check on me. Oh God, when she ever saw the dog pull me back onto the sidewalk. Wow. To, and oh, she, I'm telling you, she must have been so upset. <laughs> and, and boy, did we love that dog. And the dog, maybe they could have done something, but it it grew a big lump on its uh, neck. Oh. Must have been cancer, yeah. and we had to put him down. Yeah. I cried so much yeah. when we had to do that. But that's the dog that saved my life. And you know, I I was being disobedient. I I was supposed to stay in the back of the yard, and I did things like that often. So. <laughs> things that I wasn't supposed to, to do. do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll take a break.